everybody, it's Ryan from MyAfterSchoolToys.com with another toy review, and we've got the big guns today, literally. The A-Team, one of the most iconic action figures of the 80s, in my opinion. These toys were amazing. So what we're going to do today, we're going to look at them here, and then I'm going to bust one out of the package, just for you guys, and give an unboxing review on it. So let's start off with the boss man himself here, Hannibal. Hannibal is the man that loves it when a plan comes together. And one of the first things I see when I look at this box is the prototype Hannibal on the side that shows you all of his accessories looks nothing like the figure. The part on his head is going the wrong way. He has different color eyebrows. You can tell that they had taken this picture a long time in advance. So, looks nothing like Hannibal. But one of the cool things is all the accessories he comes with here. He's got an M60, he's got an M16, he comes with a backpack, and all the accessories are hidden in this uh, little sleeve right here on the side. And then he's got a belt with a canteen on it, which is kind of cool. And then up at the top here is the artwork, where you can see Hannibal here with his trademark cigar. And the cool thing is they took the time to put bullet holes in the packaging, just like the opening to the show which is very cool. And then we'll take a look on the back here. It just shows their pictures from the show. And of course, Mr. T, he gets a, a bonus title here. Mr. T as B.A. Baracus. Now there you go. So there's Hannibal. Let's set him to the side. Let's set up my camera a little bit different here. There we go. There's Hannibal. Next, we're going to look at Face, the ladies' man. And one thing interesting about this face action figure is that his hand wasn't fully punched <laughs> to hold the weapon, so I don't think that adds any particular value. I just thought it was kind of an interesting feature. Um, the card on this one is not real great, but again, kind of the same as the others. You can see his face on the card here. No pun intended, his face. And of course, his real name is Templeton Peck. And he was kind of the one that got the supplies for the team. He knew how to sneak in and negotiate things. So there you go. And then a little bit different backing on this one. This kind of shows you the gyrocopter you could get. And then the really cool command center down here that I have got to get someday. And then it has a, uh, a group photo up here on top as well. We're going to set face aside because we're going to open him up in just a minute and check him out. And then we got Howlin' Mad Murdoch here. The pilot, of course. And he comes with an, what is this, M16, and a really cool pair of binoculars here. He also had a grappling hook, a supply belt, and a survival backpack and harness, which is cool. And one really neat feature on here is if you look at the top, it actually says Howlin' Mad Murdoch, which he's not referred to a lot. And that's his name, Howlin' Mad Murdoch. And he's given that name because of his uh, craziness. And then the back is similar to Hannibal's here. So there's Murdoch. And then, of course, the man himself, one of my favorite figures from the 80s, Mr. T. Not only was he a cool figure with all the chains and just looked like Mr. T, a really good likeness, but he had the most accessories out of all these figures. If you can see here, he comes with a toolbox, and in the toolbox there's a drill, there's a saw, there's a hammer, a screwdriver, a socket wrench another wrench and then a tray that fits inside so a lot of cool little accessories on him and he has some bolt cutters and an M16 as well and I'd love to open this one up but this one is on the best package out of all the figures so I'm gonna leave him in the box here but there's B.A. Baracus what a cool figure you ain't getting me on no plane Hannibal alright there you go and then the same backing as the Hannibal card alright so we're going to put him there like that. Uh, I wasn't going to open up the Hannibal figure, but I just noticed that on the face figure here, there's a little piece of plastic that's been busted out over time. So we're going to open up him and see what he's got inside. Here we go. It's always hard to open these things up. It's been 30 years, and he's finally making it off the pack the way nature intended. Okay, so when we open him up right here, you can see that he's got... Nice piece of plastic holding him in. 
and then the weapons are taped in. And after 30 years, there's quite a bit of yellowing on the plastic. So we'll take off his little Uzi here. Nice little detailed Uzi. And then his M16 as well. And then here's the figure. It looks kind of like face. He's got a cool little leather jacket here and a canteen belt on the side. It's got like another little pistol holster and then some like little utility holsters on it. And then a 1983 stamping in the back as well. Uh, as far as articulation, none in the arms except at the joints here. Uh, no wrist or elbow movement. But in the legs, they do move up and bend. Like this. Wow, did you hear that sound? That is the sound of 30-year-old plastic joints moving <laughs> for the first time. All right. There you go. And then let's look at his uh, accessories here. Put that up. Can you stand on your own face? There we go. Okay, and then his accessories came in this part right here in this little bag. Let's open them up. And see what we got. Okay, so he's got a radio backpack here. And it looks like that clips into these little holes here. I won't take too much time just for the sake of the video, but we'll see if we can get it on him. Just like that. Didn't know there was assembly required. Okay. And then I'm assuming that fits over his head like this. And then these little parts come around to attach. Like that. Not the highest quality on this rubber. I can see why it would break easily. I never had this uh, action figure to play with early as a kid, so I didn't realize what kind of harness system he had. But that fits in there, and you get the idea. He has a nice little radio backpack here. It's got some cool features. It's got a little phone right there. Very nice. And then he also has a strap here for his M16. Let me tell you, there was no political correctness back in the 80s when it came to guns, because these guys are loaded down, just like in the show. I remember all the controversy, too, about the A-Team, how parents groups are coming out and saying it was so bad for kids to watch but honestly no one ever ever died in the episodes so I guess compared to today's standards it's not too bad uh, this clips on the front here like this like that and then I guess it slides down and then the other end clips onto this little hook and then he can slide it onto his shoulder, like that. So that's very cool. And then he's got the Uzi here. Let's see if we can punch this plastic through here. Uh, let's see. We'll try a pin here. I really would like him to be able to hold his weapon. Well, doesn't look like it's going to work. So you know what? We'll just stick it in the other hand, <laughs> like this. Maybe I'll take the time later to uh, punch the plastic out. So there is Face. These are really cool figures. Like I said, mostly because of the accessories. They were fairly decent likeness. And they were the same size as your He-Man figures. So what I would use, I used to do was make scenarios where the A-Team got sent back in time in a time machine. And they had to help He-Man repair the attack track. And of course, you know, BA was like, hey, I'm here to help He-Man. And they teamed up and, you know, became a fighting force. A-Team and He-Man. I don't know. Anyways, that's our review for these figures. Very, very cool. 1983 from Galoob. Great collector's items. And Face is now going to find a place, a permanent place on my toy shelf. And no, look, no holes in the bottom for stands. So he'll stand on his own. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the review. We got more to come. I love these toys. Go check them out. Make sure you visit our website at myafterschooltoys.com for a database on all kinds of 80s toys. And until next time, as usual, long live the 80s. Get away from me, fate.